Uh, as you probably know, there is a Q&A section after the presentation, so you can ask any question in the Slido. So let's introduce our speakers. The following topic will be presented by two speakers, Alicia Jelinska and Oskar Becker. Alicia is the founder and president of VSA Groningen, the first vegan student association in the Netherlands. She has been active in the animal rights movement since 2015 and volunteered for, for five animal protection organizations before. Oscar is a Dutch master's student with a philosophy degree who has been active in the effective altruism movement since 2016 and the vice president of the first vegan student association in the Netherlands for the past two years. This talk will be dedicated to presenting and explaining the value of starting a vegan student association and how to do this. Let's hear them out with presentation called Why and How Should You Start a Vegan Student Association? Yes. Hi. Oops. Sorry for the... Oh. Okay. So yeah, thank you so much for the introduction and uh, hello everyone and thank you so much for joining us. We're very happy to see that all of you are interested in this topic. I'm Alicia and this is Oscar. And uh, together with some of the board members of other vegan student associations in the Netherlands, we prepared the presentation on the why and how should you start a vegan student association, uh, to which we will be referring as VSA uh, from now on. And firstly, just a quick overview of what we're going to talk about. Um, first, we'll give you, well, we'll put ourselves in a perspective and show you how important student societies have been throughout history. Then we'll tell you a little bit of how we started and how uh, during two years, we have come to the point that there are now 10 vegan student associations in the Netherlands. Afterwards, uh, we'll tell you about uh, what we do and why do we do it. Uh, so linking it also to research and showing how much potential you can have and uh, yeah, how much impact you can have as a vegan student association. Finally, afterwards, we'll tell you, we'll give you an overview of how you can start a vegan student association by yourself. And well, at the end, we'll um, share our plans to form an international vegan student movement at the end. Um, but before uh, before that, we'll be interested to find out how many of you are students. Um, so I would ask the moderator to create a poll now, if you can. And um, by students, we mean uh, students of higher education. So uh, university or university of uh, applied sciences or technical university, etc. Uh, so not high school students, um, but you know, higher education students. And for that, we would have uh, Three answers, yes, no, or not yet. And the not yet would uh, potentially apply to, um, would apply to high school students who would potentially go to university later and would still be interesting to find out, um, you know, what kind of reach we can have. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, the polls have to be made through the Zoom website. So it would take quite some time. Oh. So maybe we can all just put it in the chat box Sure. Yeah, that would be very useful. Okay, so yeah, let's encourage everybody to share their status. So if you're a student, uh, you can write yes. If not, just no. And if uh, you're a high school student, potentially going to university later, you can say not yet. It's great to see so many responses already. All students. Well, it looks like it's mostly students and I don't know if there are some people who are not and are too shy to say that they are not, but uh, we think the presentation will be relevant for both. To the students, we hope you will uh, see how important it is to, uh, like how much positive value there can be to starting a vegan student association and you will leave inspired to start your own. And to the non-students, we hope, uh, we still 
uh, put a lot of relevant things and interesting things that we think will be also relevant to you um, to apply elsewhere. So let's start with what is this? Okay. Let's start with a um, yeah, with a short background into how students have been important throughout history. Uh, we know that uh, the coordinated behavior of students has played a significant role in a bigger process in society. Students have uh, had demands, specific demands and connections to higher institutions in power, which uh, created um, periods of dissent, which eventually had an impact on the future generations and also on society at large. Uh, as a few examples, uh, we brought here uh, the White, so uh, White Rose Society uh, from Germany, which was created by um, a group of medical students from Munich um, who handed out uh, leaflets anonymously during um, yeah, the Second World War. Uh, and the leaflets were denouncing uh, the persecution of Jews and also censoring Hitler's um, uh, regime. And very interestingly, uh, one of the, the texts of one of the leaflets um, got smuggled out of Germany in uh, to the you landed in the UK and with that um, the allied planes could uh, eventually drop uh, the text all over Germany so that's how one society could have so much impact on um, yeah on the World War II and another example we found is the um, behavior and actions of students uh, in Hungary in 1956 during the Hungarian Revolution. Um, what started as a student demonstration soon became a nationwide movement and which also contributed to a political reconstruction. So of course we're not going to go into details here because this is not what the, what the presentation is about. Uh, but with this we wanted to show you how the coordinated behavior of students uh, which uh, often had new um, new ideals and actions. They brought them forward, and well, they you know um, they usually weren't the same as um, the ones of those in power. And we sort of maybe can relate to uh, it as vegans, uh, but it eventually contributed to change changes in society at large. So, with that in mind, um, we'll go into how we started in VSA. Um, so my inspiration for starting the first BSA in the Netherlands was um, came from the book How to Create a Vegan World uh, by Tobias Leinart. I'm sure some of you know that and if you don't I strongly recommend it. Um, I was reading it when I firstly arrived in Groningen, the city I'm studying in, uh, for my bachelor's studies and I was just reading it and it really inspired me especially on page 99 to be specific where Tobias was um, writing about how um, schools are a critical area for institutional change. But he was writing about how um, external, so I mean, a vegan or animal rights um, organizations have, are influencing the universities, um, for example, the, their canteen's choices or, um, or giving presentations, for example, at the universities. But I thought, uh, why not start something like that from within? So at the student level, being a student voice um, and, and you know spreading the vegan message. So um, I had the um, I wrote the message uh, on a Facebook group, um, Vegan Students Groningen, uh, asking if there's any vegan student society already existing, uh, because I thought. Um, it's, it's a perfect audience to spread the idea to. Students don't live with parents anymore, uh, so they can make independent um, choices. Um, and we know this can be quite difficult. Um, they also care about the environment. They also are more idealistic and they wanna see a difference in the world. Um, also like Tobias was writing, um, you can influence the um, canteens in the schools. So with that, that translates to uh, a number of animals being spared and also a number of environmental resources being uh, saved with every meal a person is eating, whether they are vegan, vegetarian or just trying a vegan meal. So I thought, well, it's a perfect time because vegan is, veganism is growing in perfect place, so let's do this. 
So like I said, I wrote this message uh, in late August 2018 and wow, well, 20 people showed up to the first meeting and well, I had no idea how many people to expect. I didn't know anyone in the city yet. But um, yeah, we were, turned out we were the first one uh, in the Netherlands. There was no other one uh, yet. Uh, and we started uh, organizing our first events. Uh, one of the first ones uh, were a couple of potlucks and potlucks, uh, if some of you uh, don't know what that means, is an event where uh, everyone brings a dish and everyone is sharing it. So it's of course a great way to uh, create a community uh, because well, food unites people, right? So that was uh, our, these were some of our first events uh, to create a, create a great community. Then we started um, focusing on more educational events uh, well, we did some chalking nights. We also, actually the first um, event was a Dominion screening on the um, Animal Rights Day in, on the 10th of December. And 70 people came to the, our first public event and it was so unexpected. And that really showed how much demand there is for a vegan student association. And yeah, well, this was two years ago and now it's 2020 and you can see uh, some sort of events we've been creating it um, since then, um, but a really uh, like a great highlight came in February 2019 when we became official. So that means we officially registered in the Netherlands, and yeah, the news spread out um, on onto the first local news, then regional news. We also go, got into the most popular radio shows at some point where Oscar was doing all the interviews at like 7 a.m. in the morning every day, <laughs> which is crazy. And we also got invited into a game show at the Saturday uh, 8 p.m. Um, slot. So we know that the average um, viewing at that point is around 800,000 in the Netherlands. So with all of those and also mentioning that uh, we got onto the national news twice even, we know that we have reached over a million people with the positive vegan message in the Netherlands. And well, the news spread out, right? And soon the students in other cities in the Netherlands started contacting us to help them uh, start a vegan student association in their city. So in 2019, there were already five um, such student associations in the Netherlands. And in 2020, uh, we are helping uh, five other ones. So that makes 10 um, this year. And if that is not enough achievements, uh, VSA Groningen was also nominated to the Vegan Awards in 2019 um, for the, um, yeah, we were nominated for the category of the best vegan newcomer and we were competing with uh, restaurants and companies which are already established and we we're the only student association um, competing and we got the second place which was really um, really a big achievement for us so that was a great opportunity to meet um, after the vegan awards uh, in amsterdam um, with all the other vsas that were already existing so that was five at the beginning uh, all the board members have met for the first time and we uh, recognize the value of actually starting a VSA Netherlands network. So that means a, that we would um, recognize how much value there is to sharing um, our best practices, our best resources and ideas with each other and making ourselves uh, each other more effective and yeah, more efficient for the animals and the planet. But also creating a central point where people could come up to, um, where people could contact if they want to start a student association because before it was uh, people didn't really know who to reach out to and just single uh, associations got um, yeah messages um, yeah so we agreed on a shared mission values and name um, the mission focusing on three pillars uh, education providing education so raising awareness about the animal agriculture and its impact on the environment building a community which is supportive and so that well, so that people don't just go vegan, but also stay vegan. This is very important, something that Oscar will also be talking about soon. And the third pillar would be creating a facilitating environment. So that means mm, making veganism more easy, the environment where it is more easy and more affordable and also 
enjoyable to be vegan. So these are the uh, three pillars that each chapter is uh, focusing on. And um, yeah, now Oscar will tell you more how well, he will link the mission to what we do and when do we do it, how much impact you can have of that. Yeah, okay. So um, yeah, we heard a little bit about the mission, what we want to do, what our goals are. And I'll talk a bit about what we actually do and how in practice it looks like when we try to achieve those goals. We already had some examples of events, but I'll talk about those in a bit more detail and uh, along with some research show how uh, what we do actually uh, adds value to the city and veganism as a whole. So first of all, when you start a PSA, you hopefully bring a bunch of vegans and like-minded people together. And having such a, like a group together already at the start immediately creates opportunities in your city. So some things that you couldn't do before and now can do are things like hosting frequent events. So in most of our cities, we host events like once a week, which is quite a lot and is a good way to reach people. And it gives you the opportunity to partner up with local businesses and your university. And uh, I'll talk a bit about the specific value of hosting these events and these partnerships. Um, first of all, in uh, alignment with our mission is uh, uh, that we try to provide education. So we host events with an educational purpose where we try to raise awareness about veganism and related topics. So veganism and it's linked to factory farming, climate change, and we just try to promote vegan living to um, people in general through the city and hopefully also uh, people that are not vegan yet. And we do this by, do this by uh, organizing stalls at information markets, uh, doing public outreach on the streets and talking about VSA and veganism to people and hosting more uh, actual event events uh, like screenings, uh, as the minion screening from uh, about uh, factory farming. Um, we host lectures. Here you can see a picture of uh, Ed Winters or Irving Ed, who's famous on YouTube and a lot of people probably know who came to some of our cities to give a lecture. Here you see him in Nijmegen. And uh, also things like cooking videos organized by Visa Rotterdam that they post on their Instagram. And other things like discussion nights. And in this way, we try to promote vegan living and raise awareness about veganism. And in this way, we try to create uh, more vegans in our cities. Uh, so that's one kind of uh, activity that we try to do, providing education. Um, you can see here, there's some uh, research from the Humane League Labs from 2014. And it shows the resources more most likely to convince people to eliminate or reduce uh, animal products from their diet or their lifestyle. And uh, you can see that documentaries are the main reason for people. So this has been a mainstay in, I think, all our chapters as an event. Just it's low cost, it's easy to organize, and it actually has a big influence on your city and the people that watch it. Um, otherwise, you can also see educational events in there, which of course we host, and things like flyers that we uh, use for outreach uh, show that this kind of event actually really can help uh, have a, uh, be a good cause for veganism and uh, your city. So that's one kind of event. And uh, before I'll go to the other kind of event, which is more based on community building, I'll talk a bit about some research that we found uh, that we think is interesting for what we uh, organize. So this is uh, some research by Chris Bryan from 2018, and it shows uh, common opinions uh, from people about veganism, and they can say they agree or disagree with the statement. And you can see, people, like most people, when they make arguments about veganism, it's mostly about the ethical side and the environmental side. And in general, uh, People agree that veganism is ethical, that it's good for the environment, that's, that even that it's healthy, most people agree, but where you, where you see people disagree the most are the bottom four, for example, so that it's affordable, enjoyable, convenient, easy. These are things that people really uh, struggle with, with veganism, or at least it has a bad, uh, uh, it has a bad image. And these are problems that we try to address by uh, hosting events and the activities that we organize in our cities. 
uh, sort of related and something that I'll uh, come back to twice is this analytics study report from 2015. And it uh, gives the most frequent answers for people uh, quitting on their diet or going back to some form of animal products. And uh, it also states in the research that 70% of all vegans fall back on their vegan diet in some way and go back to consuming animal products. So this is something that we feel is important to uh, address. And the most frequent answers given for stopping uh, eating the diet is uh, that they were unsatisfied with food, uh, that it was not good for their health, that they had social issues, that it was inconvenient, uh, that the costs were too high, or that they lacked motivation. And yeah, it sort of overlaps with the last one. And these are the kind of things uh, you should uh, keep in mind when we talk about the community building events that I'll uh, discuss now. So first of all, we had the educational events. So we tried to create new vegans. And uh, now we have the events that are really focused on people that are already vegan or want to like get in touch with it in some way. But uh, these are basically just fun events. And uh, these are things like the potlucks that we enjoyed. You can see a picture of uh, the Vegan Student Association in the Dutch city of Aveningen, or PSA Amsterdam at the Pride March. And uh, things like potlucks, drinks, pop quizzes, and game nights, just the things that are really the, uh, the norm for any student association, just helps people enjoy being vegan in their city. And it also helps them stay vegan. It just showed that in the Phonolytics report that people quit on their diet because of social issues. Uh, well, this makes it that your city will have a uh, environment where it's normal to be vegan, where it's yeah, just not weird, where you have people that are vegan around you, where you can go to a place where you don't have to ask for stuff, so it's also convenient. And we also noticed that when people have problems with motivation or if, like struggle with their diets, then they, instead of just quitting on it, it really helps to have a community where you can ask fellow vegans or people that are on the same journey about it and and that way you can keep each other motivated and you can figure these questions out and still stay on the diet and instead of just giving up. So we feel like that's really one of the big uh, benefits of hosting these kind of community building events. Um, apart from organizing events, uh, we also uh, try to create a facilitating environment by um, collaborating with local businesses. So we uh, have in Groningen, for example, we have deals with uh, eight restaurants now where we have discounts for our members, which makes it so that vegan options um, are promoted and it's actually good vegan food. And with the discount, it becomes more affordable and uh, yeah, it just makes it for a better environment. And we offer vegans an option to join for relatively little money to uh, have access to this at a discount and just make vegan food and vegan living easier in the city. Uh, other than that, we also try to work with our universities and faculties. This is something we're really in the early stages of, but uh, for example, in uh, the city Nijmegen, the campus now, because of uh, the Vegan Student Association, now serves vegan pizza in their uh, canteens. And I'm not sure how it is in other cities, but uh, university canteens can be a bit of a sad affair. So having vegan options that's other than just a you know, peanut butter sandwich really makes it a more convenient uh, uh, environment where you just have a cheap option that's easy to get. You don't have to be the awkward one asking in the your group asking for the vegan option if they can make anything. So in this way, by creating, creating a facilitating environment, we try to bring satisfying food for a normal cost in, an, in a convenient way to our cities. And that's a way we really think we can bring a lot of value. Um, so this is what we as like local chapters in our cities uh, found that we can bring to uh, the city and to the vegans in our city. And we think this is actually really useful. And we already talked a bit about the national network and I'll keep this short because this is probably a bit far in the future, but we have started a national network where we uh, centralize some common board work and people don't reach out to the different cities, but just to the VSA Netherlands board. And in this way, we try to make it more easy to for new cities to start up. So we have a national network that will be completely dedicated to 
helping out new cities get started. If they need help, if they have any questions, we walk them through the beginning phases. Uh, we help them with getting funding and we just share documents to get everything started easy. And then once we can get them quicker off the ground, the faster they can host events and be a positive influence in their city. Um, having 10 cities um, work closely together also really helped in difficult times when we have common challenges. So we're all in COVID right now. Uh, we have to work now in an online environment and brainstorming these common challenges that uh, yeah, difficulties bring uh, really helps all the chapters uh, perform the best that they can. We, like, we all struggle with this and if someone finds a solution to something or thinks that uh, something that really works in their city, then we immediately try it in our city and hopefully this way we, as a national network, we work together to make all the local chapters even better. And something for the future, we hope to also organize national events instead of just regional events, but that is uh, still yet to come. Um, so, well, maybe after that, uh, and you are a student, you see, I think, oh, that sounds pretty uh, fun to start a student association in my own city. Uh, then it's a question of how to do this, of course. And um, I won't talk, it won't be a complete exhaustive list, but something to help you get started and get sort of an idea of what this will look like. Um, so first of all, if you want to go on this journey, you have to find fellow vegans or like-minded people that want to go on this journey with you. So for Groningen, for our city, that was just sending a message in a vegan Facebook group and uh, proposing the idea and we had 20 people come to the first meeting and that's the way the ball started rolling. So social media and for us, especially Facebook has really been a useful tool to meet new people and reach out to people. Like in all the cities we've been to, there has been some vegan insert city name group where there's a bunch of people that are probably students and are interested to join. And that's a good way to start. And then immediately after it's useful to start, uh, create an online presence where, so Facebook page, Instagram account, I don't know what other people use, TikTok. Uh, and uh, that's where you can share your events, people can find you, and in this way you can really start growing and get people on board. Uh, so once you have people and you get together, what we really found was useful was uh, to start with really low-key, easy community building events. You could, uh, we probably made the mistake to start really fast with the formal stuff and making it very, a bit too serious, but it really helps to start with community building events where all the new members get to uh, meet each other and really start bonding. So everyone really wants to work towards a certain goal. If you know each other, see each other frequently, in just uh, fun environments, then once you have that going, then they also want to work towards maybe more the educational events or work on the official stuff to become an official organization. So that's really what we uh, would focus on. We started with a lot of potlucks, uh, drinks, evenings, and just anything fun, easy to organize. Um, one way we found uh, new members as well is by reaching out to local or regional media, which was surprisingly easy in most cities even. So to meet, reach students, it's useful to uh, be in contact with the university newspaper if that uh, exists, or uh, we have uh, ma online magazines that students, we know students like to read, and they've always been very, from the beginning, very uh, well, ha happy to talk with us. They are interested in a new thing, so they want to write about it. And even uh, regional uh, radio, television, it might not be where the students are listening to, but the parents might be listening to it and inform their uh, kids or uh, students or future students. And that's also a way we found uh, new members. Uh, the last thing on this is that uh, it's important in this early stage to find the right people to take uh, charge. So um, we think it's probably a common trap to immediately put people in positions, immediately in the first meeting, decide what the board is or who will be in what committee. Like use these first a few meetings, have like a sharp eye for uh, who's good at what, who's most motivated, like who uh, brings what. Some people might be very motivated, but fit one position way more than the other. 
So really use these things sort of as trial periods. You don't even have to have that official, but just be on the lookout in these first things and you'll find out that some people are really good at social media and other people are really, really want to reach out to businesses. And uh, yeah, um, doing that in the beginning, take your time in the beginning really helps you in the long run if you have to write people in a position and you don't have to change that halfway through the year. Um, another process which um, is uh, quite important in the Netherlands as well is that um, as an association we all try to become official which means that we have a, an, a statute, uh, we have bylaws and we have to go to a notary and figure all that out and that has some benefits but I'll first talk about the, I, I'd like to say that it is not necessary or at least not in the Netherlands and you would have to see in your own city and uh, uh, country what's, what's the norm here. Maybe you have student associations or societies that don't become official and they can still just be as good. We were able to organize events and do a bunch of, of the things that we think bring value before we were official. So it's not necessary, but it does have some benefits. So it uh, makes it so that you can have a bank account and uh, be official so you can uh, apply for grants more easily so you can get uh, money from university or asset organizations. Um, it gives you some credibility for the university and for other uh, organizations if you are an official organization. And it also makes it so that um, if you have a statute and bylaws in which you very clearly say what happens in what situation and who is accountable when that it's not just you as the board that is accountable when something goes wrong. So. There's benefits. It's something that I wouldn't focus on in the beginning, but uh, something to ask a study advisor about or check what other student societies do in your city. Um, that uh, becoming official does cost some money. We uh, mainly funded that just with membership fees, which, well, in the Netherlands is 10 euros, but just look at your own student societies in your city what they ask, which for in the Netherlands, 10 euros is very low barrier of entry. We didn't want money to be a reason for people not to sign up. So we have money to host events and pay for some things, but we wanted to keep it as low as possible so that no one will think that I really want to join, but I don't have the money. So that's how we thought about that. Uh, you can ask, see if university grants exist. Um, we got funding from other organizations, vegan organizations for uh, uh, groups that uh, invest in uh, uh, things like vegan organizations or other things that are focused on sustainability and otherwise something that we didn't do but you can always ask uh, friends and family and start a crowdfunding uh, campaign. Uh, lastly something that we've talked about a little bit is that uh, once you get started it's really useful in our eyes to if you want to grow and do fun things is to start collaborating so I already talked a bit about the benefits of having discounts for your members. People want to sign up and it's useful for the members. So reach out to local businesses, not just for discounts, but also for events. Because we build up good relationships with uh, local businesses, we can now host events without any uh, renting costs, which uh, can, be the, can be quite high if uh, you don't look properly. So. If you build up good relations and you can get free location, that's really useful. Um, and we also immediately started collaborating with other organizations. So we have organi organizations in all the cities that, like in all cities, we uh, organize stuff with uh, as, um, associations or organizations that are focused on sustainability or uh, I don't know, other activist groups maybe. You can see here on the picture, uh, the people from Nijmegen, they went to a laser tech hall, which is, I've never heard of it before, but it's a vegan arcade hall. So it's <laughs> laser gaming and other arcade games, I guess. And uh, they only serve vegan food. So that's just one fun uh, kind of event you could host uh, with other organizations. And in this way, you can reach a wider audience, maybe inspire their members and get inspired by their organization. And in this way, you don't have to do it all together. Um, that's all I wanted to say about how to start it. Uh, just one thing, like it's not everything, but I just wanted to, we just, in this way, we wanted to give you an idea of what starting an association 
like uh, ours would look like. So what's next? We like to dream big and we're envisioning an international network, uh, hopefully next year, uh, an international network of vegan student societies. Um, with, of which purpose would be to, um, like I already said before, to share the common um, ideas, common practices, common challenges with each other so that we can become even more effective together and we can really make the most difference we can have for the lives of animals and the planet. And also that that would uh, be also an, an international point that people can contact so that they, if they want to have um, if they want to start a student association, then there's already a place they can contact to start up. And you can see on the map on the right that we um, have been looking for student, uh, the vegan student societies that already exist in Europe. Um, but we don't speak some of the languages, so it wasn't that easy to find. Uh, we found some mostly in Germany, in the Netherlands and the UK, a couple, of, a few in Switzerland, Sweden. But um, we hope there's there will be more and as you can see there is room for a lot new more vegan student associations so we hope you could see the value of starting uh, a student association by yourself like that and we hope if you leave inspired to start one by yourself then uh, you can contact us at the email below which is vsanl at care at gmail.com it's a temporary email because we will only become, uh, we're just um, becoming visible to uh, the outside world. We will have a proper v uh, VSA Netherlands account on Facebook uh, in a few weeks, probably. So that's just a temporary email if you want to contact us. And yeah, thank you so much for listening. And we're very excited to uh, hear your questions. Okay. Thank you, Alicia and Oscar. It was really amazing. And for me especially, because I can relate because I'm a student also, as I written in the comments. Nice, awesome. <laughs> yeah. And I guess we can move on to the questions. There are many of them. So the first question is, do you have any recommendations how to keep the VSA active during the quarantine? Yeah, that's what we've, we've been um, brainstorming these days with um, VSA Netherlands. Uh, one popular event that has been going on has been um, a game night, which has been taking place like weekly or bi-weekly at least in Groningen. And that's a great way to keep people active and uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, online games that you can play and that still, uh, you know, sticks the community together. For example, that's one, um, that's one idea. Other, yeah, other than that, if you start up, we immediately uh, divide it, uh, like our active members into committees and having a good media committee that keeps people engaged on social media is really useful. So that's uh, one way to keep interacting on like having a good Instagram team, Facebook team, that's really useful. And with COVID, like we don't want to host big physical events, but we have started hosting like one and a half meter distance uh, events in the park right now, now that the weather is good. We feel like outside events uh, with like a one and a half meter distance are like, um, a possibility again. So that's uh, something that uh, we try to focus on now that the weather is uh, at least uh, still good. Yes, some cities have been organizing potlucks, for example, uh, where you can still keep a distance and eat food together or some outside games as well. That's a really fun thing to do. Um, yeah, we're planning an opening event soon as well and just uh, we're, we're going to discuss the possibilities um, and that's the value of the network. Do you want to add something? Oh. Okay, thank you very much. The next question is, um, how much time does it take you, for example, in a week to run a VSA? Um, well, that's a pretty difficult question. It really differs. Um, I don't know if that's a question from someone from the Netherlands or from someone from outside. But, um, well, for us, since we were the first ones, it took a really 
uh, a bunch of um, time to start a BSA and well we don't want to scare anyone but we both have a study delay now but that that won't happen to anyone else because uh, well we laid the grounds for everyone in the Netherlands now uh, so they are using um, for example our statutes or uh, several documents that we've created as well um, so that won't be a case for others but um, I think around I don't know, eight, 10 hours? Yeah, like it really depends how much time you want to spend on it. Um, I think even like four to eight hours as a board member could be possible. It's, it is quite a lot of work, but it's just important in the beginning to immediately get other people involved and start like delegating tasks and make sure that like the workload gets spread as much as possible. Yeah super important just yeah. like don't take all the work on yourself that's also what we did <laughs> at the beginning that's also probably really create a strong board at the beginning and a strong community where you know you, you have people you can rely on and that you can spread the word to and that you're not alone uh, doing everything yeah. but everything it's really manageable like as a part-time um like a site association Any other questions? Yeah, there are probably three more questions as I saw. Okay, so the next question is, what were your first or very first expectations of the possible ups and downs when starting this kind of a movement among students? Hmm. Um, well, to be honest, when I started it, I had really like I had no idea what this is going to be like I like I just became a student I really wasn't a student yet and so I didn't know how student societies work before and what could go wrong and what uh, what could go uh, well but I really thought there will be a demand that this will be popular because it's the perfect place perfect time to start such a student association but we had a couple of uh, downs and ups <laughs> Yeah, um, like ups and the ups and downs we had at, uh, before we started joining. Um, I think before I even joined the uh, community, I already was vegan for two years, never met another vegan, so I had no idea <laughs> what the whole community was like. So I, I went in it completely blind, basically. Like I had my, like, uh, I wasn't sure about like if there would be like, value clashes or anything, but. Um, yeah, I was really uh, positively surprised by how open everyone was to working together. And yeah, we started it basically from scratch. So we looked up a bit to like the legal process of getting started, but we uh, had a few law students who uh, <laughs> or in the um, association. So we just uh, delegated that to them. So that also helped. But um, yeah, it, but all the difficult things were also fun to do for the first time and figure out and make mistakes and uh, yeah. learn from them. You're learning really so much. We learned so much during those years, like just never before. And it's, it's really an amazing experience to see. Um, also like learning to work with other people and um, yeah, in the whole association managing this. Uh, I don't think we mentioned that, but we got 90 members this year. It renews every year so that we, we keep getting more and more. And yeah, there's, there's just so much <laughs> that, um, yeah, that you can learn. And yeah, I, I think if we, if we had to start that again, and like thinking, because we had no idea how this will um, be, but even with the, um, yeah, even, um, even that now we know how much work there is, and now that we, you know, have a study delay, we still think it was so, uh, worth so much to start this and we wouldn't um, yeah do it differently yeah I think that um, like people are probably always learning like throughout the process when you are st starting some kind of a movement and you never know like what to expect exactly like you just like learn through the process mm -hmm. Okay, and 
on the Slido, there is one last question. What do you consider the easiest and most effective kind of event to host as a new association in order to quickly build up a sense of community? Well, we know an answer to that. I think it would be drinks or potlucks. Uh, I think drinks have a lower threshold to join. Uh, we have uh, monthly drinks, we didn't mention that. We have monthly drinks um, where people, well, it's just so easy. You just come in and you just have fun. You don't have to bring anything like to a potluck. Um, I personally consider a potluck more fun because there's food, there's food and people always join when there's food. But, uh, you know, sometimes, I don't know, maybe you don't have time to prepare something and there's a higher threshold to join. But uh, that's really a great way to, um, we, we always, I think, have more, most people who are coming to our drinks. Yeah, and then, yeah, potlucks just bring some people, like, and it's nice to have those two together because some people don't like, like, drinking environments, which we don't do heavy drinking or anything, but... Uh, they don't like going out at night to a bar or something. So people really look forward to the potlucks where they can just make their own food, see what other people cook. So they get inspired by uh, the vegan food that other people make. And otherwise, after that, I think, after the community things, I think screenings are really an easy way to uh, start stuff. When you don't have any money yet, you can just like rent a room in, um, uh, in your university building with a big screen and uh, show like one of one of the big uh, documentaries that there are and there are so many and it's proven that how that they're really influential and we have had many people who come to those that are also not vegan and then have afterwards become vegan and have are now after two years still very active in our association so yeah those are the three events I would say are the most have been the most important in our association yeah, we really got some people who weren't vegan come to our events and now they're uh, very active members, even a chair. And so that's really, we see just immediately how much impact you can have. And um, yeah, and about the potlucks, uh, you can combine it with a meeting. You can, you know, uh, you can eat for, I don't know, an hour uh, and then you can have a meeting afterwards. So. That's a good way to combine these two. And yeah, we in VSA, we don't really have a drinking culture. Uh, most of our vegan friends don't drink. <laughs> but still, uh, <laughs> you know, there are bars that uh, you know, cater everyone. Mm -hmm. Also non-alcoholics. Non we have two minutes left. So I'm just going to read you one note and one last question from the yeah. chat. Uh, one participant. Uh, Writes that he's few students who care a lot about the world and its well-being, and then he has missed this in the last 45 years. And there's also a question from this uh, same user: uh, if you could tell what you have learned from your from the mistakes that you made. Huh, okay, there, there's there's really a lot, and I would really like to talk to that person even more uh, afterwards. <laughs> Because, um, yeah, mostly um, we learned a lot about um, working with people and, um, yeah, being on the board and choosing the right people for the right positions and, God, there's just so much to say. Yeah, like that, <laughs> how to get people motivated to, uh, to work with you on something, uh, importance of delegating tasks and getting people in the right positions. Uh, how, how to activate people to do stuff because usually people have a lot of ideas and then uh, they're not as uh, willing to you know take on the idea and actually do something about it so we learn some things um, how to yeah part of that process but uh, like if that person wants to talk to us more uh, because it's just two minutes and there's really a lot that we don't know how to summarize uh, that you can send us an email. Um, yeah, maybe we can share it on the chat. Yeah, sure. You can use the chat. Right. So I'll just So yeah, you can just contact us if you have any further questions, if you are interested in starting a vegan student association in your country and, or if your city. And we'll be super excited to 
yeah, tell you more about it and help you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Oscar and Alicia, for your very nice presentation. It was very useful, I guess, for everyone uh, in this room.